I don't know. The end of my last stream kind of set me off, so I'm going to rant about Realm of the Mad God and the upcoming Realm rework for a bit, because I like this game. I've played this game a lot. I think I have quite a bit to show for how much i play this game. But the thing is, like, it always feels better when the game you're playing has an active community or has a lot of players, but Realm of the Mad God really feels like it's dying, and or is just, like, pretty much a dead game with its own kind of community and player base, but there's an event coming up called the Realm Rework. Now, the hope for the Realm Rework is that's another boom for the game, because Realm of the Mad God is ancient. It's over a decade old. It goes back to Flash games on Congregate, which is where a lot of people are, have maybe played this game at least a little bit in the past, but also, like, ported on over to Steam, had this major exaltation update, so has had flashes of popularity. Also, from time to time, like, a big streamer or influencer will play the game, and then a couple people jump in. One of the biggest problems with the game is the early game is outdated, convoluted, the realm doesn't make any sense, you're just kind of lost from level 1 to 20 and getting your few uh, first few potions, and then people just don't stick with the game. So this is going to actually like make the early game more accessible, also give players in the mid to late game more to do than just like the same grinding in the outdated realm. Now my issue is that I don't think the realm rework is going to do anything for the popularity of this game. That's because the dev decisions are baffling and terrible. Also, it feels like this game just respects your time less and less. I know it's kind of funny when like, if you have any history with Realm of the Mad God, it just seems like a game that doesn't care about your time because of the permadeath, because of the endless grinding. But there's points in this game where your time feels very respected, and that's also why I got sucked back into it. I've been playing this game for about the last year and a half. I've put 1,200 hours into Realm of the Mad God on my Steam account in the last year and a half because I've been having fun. That fun has been wavering more and more as time went on, but that early part, you know, it really feels like Realm of Mad God is like the best MMO for the mid to early game because the dopamine rewards, the grinding, even though you do get like setbacks and you die a lot, it doesn't feel as bad. And then like the events, a lot of the other quality of life changes that we've seen, like the forge, just like went, wow, I am feeling rewarded for my time. It feels like this game is actually like really cool and really fun to play. And then you get like uh, potions, you start maxing out characters, and you make progression. Like your progression feels equivalent, if not just like better than the work you're putting into the game, which is really good. And that lasts for a few hundred hours, which is also really cool. But over the last year or so, it really felt like the devs have gone, nah, we don't like you grinding our game and getting too much stuff. And we think the end game needs to be unnecessarily hard and take an unnecessary amount of time. Also, it's like, same thing for the events and stuff, that this event is outrageous, that so you need to collect these mastery tokens. Now, I've loved the events. The events have gotten me, like, stuck into this game because they give me access to the content that I can't otherwise get, or, you know, it jumps you ahead. Instead of farming in the in-game dungeons that are super hard, or maybe, like, above your character experience, your gear, and your skill level, you can actually, like, farm these little bits of things and then get, like, a really big reward at the end. That's cool. But... It just got it's gotten worse and worse that like last year felt like you could easily complete the event you can do a lot of the things and it was natural it worked with the gameplay loop and you got a decent reward out of it with this they want you to get 300 of these tokens now as i just showed it's not super hard and doesn't take a crazy amount of time to get a mastery token but still like six plus hours a week of just grinding the same thing over and over again that doesn't feel great. And the thing is, the rewards aren't even that great for the amount of work you have to put into the event, which is another insulting thing about what the devs have been up to. I mentioned the month of the Mad God. This is supposed to be the big anniversary event, celebration, calendar full of events, non-stop dungeon running, all kinds of crazy rewards and loot. But the problem is, like, the last couple of them have been a joke. Last year being, like, super notorious that it just... It just didn't make sense. It was awful. Half the content was not worth participating in. You had to go through all these loops. So it didn't feel like a celebration for the player base. It just felt like unnecessary time-gated content that didn't even give you any good rewards. This year's Month of Mad God? Kind of the same thing. There's a new enchanting system. This comes with all new gear sets and playstyles and stuff, and it sounds really awesome. The reason why I enjoy Realm of Mad God so much is that it really tickles that gamertism of watching numbers go up. I'm an old school RuneScape player. I don't mean OSRS. I mean, I played RuneScape back in 2007. I think I actually started in like 2006 or something. So I'm used to just hitting a tree, 
for hours on end all night instead of going to sleep during middle school and just having a fun time like making those little progressions getting my levels upgrading gear so realm mad god has that and the forge system like makes it even better that's another reason why i've been able to stick into this game so much is because like the loot doesn't feel too bad when i got back into the game i had a lot of fun farming the lower tier more common loot and then crafting it into things i never thought i would have a decade ago you know the cloak of the plane walker that was a crazy rare white bag drop like you saw someone with that they were balling out of control coral silk armor coral bow doom bow all of these other things and new items for like the new classes like the summoner all kinds of fun but it was accessible i was able to instead of you know go a hundred dry or like just grind forever and not see a super rare drop i was able to get more common drops craft them together, increase my power level, use that to get more potions, max out my character, start soloing content, get more drops, eventually like getting a plane walker or a doom bow for myself just as a natural drop, crafting that into higher tier stuff, and then making in insane amounts of progression inside the game. The numbers go up of Realm of the Mad God is super enjoyable. That's why I'm saying like it's the best MMO for the early to mid game because your time is rewarded. Everything you do, you feel the progression of, and it's really cool. But then for all the in-game stuff and the new enchantment system, the devs have gone, nah, screw you, we don't want your time respected, and we actually don't want you getting any stronger. They even make a note of it about power creep. So, as noted by people in the release of the engraving system, the cost to unlock slots was quite high. We were trying to balance them between the fact that we want it to be available for players without making it too common until more difficult content has been released to avoid significant power creep. Problem is, it's only been, like, power creep for the content over the last year and a half as I've played, but no power creep for the player. The problem is that the super rare items you get from the endgame dungeon drops just aren't really that much powerful than what was already inside the game, even though the content itself was way more difficult. I haven't completed a Cogbold Steamworks. I got, like, one of these points from doing the pre-boss, but I haven't done the full boss. I've played for 1,200 hours. I have all of this cool stuff. I have tons of max characters with all kinds of cool stuff and like high level gear on them still haven't done an oryx 3 the only way i was able to do the void was from the remnant of the void but when it comes to pub runs of the shatters those are impossible and pub runs of even shatters rehearsal where it's like hey let's get the community together to learn this to make it more accessible no that was a complete failure so like this content is just too difficult and that's where my biggest problem with the devs comes in, because it feels like they're being held hostage by the 1% of the player base that's like min-maxing their content, doing speed runs of all the in-game stuff, and it's really just Discord gated. Also, uh, PBE gated. So you have to like join the public beta, which means you're also not making, like you're not spending time on your main character, so you're not progressing on your main character. You have to join the beta, you also have to like get into the Discord, and then you're doing runs in the beta to test new content. That becomes practice for this. And then you still have to join a Discord to do group runs of whatever, like, in-game dungeon you're trying to complete. Most players don't want to do that. The average player just wants to chill and have fun on their own or with their friends. And the weird thing about Realm of the Mad God is that the in-game content is impossible to do publicly or just on your own. I feel like with all the stuff I have and all the things I've done, I'm, you know, like a top 10% player. But there is a wall. It's like a great filter between an above average player, and then the 1% that can actually like consistently do Oryx 3 and all the end game content. But you also do need a Discord group and they also have like restrictions and you can only bring certain gear and you have to do things a certain way. So it gets really annoying to actually do all that content and in, and the dev's response is making the end game harder. Cogbold Steamworks is absurd. Moonlit Village, absurd. O3 was already like super hard. No one's running shatters anyways. And then all of this just takes so long. But the biggest like slap in the face over this is that the in-game content isn't even tradable. Like the back half of the game is all soulbound. So there's no economy to crash by making the in-game content easier and accessible. That if someone's like, you know, speedrunning Oryx 3 or something, they make and they nerf it so more players have access to it, that means they just get more items they're not going to use that they can't trade or do anything with. It, it doesn't harm anyone to make the game easier for more players and they just need to do it for everyone in general because there's these like exaltations that was a big update that got a lot of players back into the game but you need to complete 75 of an in-game dungeon some of which take over 10 minutes and again these are rare dungeons that they're not just spawning i can't just hop i can't just click on this and then go into the dungeon and complete it no i have to wait for someone to pop a 
key that costs real money or that takes like a very long time to farm inside the game or i have to like go into the realm into the area defeat the boss hopefully enough people come in and then i can beat it that way that's also factoring in like perfect non-stop runs see okay so yeah someone just popped it right there yeah you go into this like this this public public run is not going to work so it easily takes at least a hundred hours of non-stop runs that are going to completion where you're not dying or teleporting out and people are just chaining them non-stop to max out one character out of the 18 characters in the game so I also don't see how it's like, oh, well, people will run out of content if we make the end game more accessible. It's already outrageous, and you're supposed to be get benefits for the exaltations. That, you know, we can get extra experience. Even when you hit max level, you can still use experience to gain fame. So you're getting, like, more bonuses from the in-game currency that's not paid. You can also do the battle pass with that. And then your character, you know, okay, so we get experience. We can do more damage. And, like, all that work, like, maxing out a character gets you 10% more damage. After, like, all of that time investment. And then you can do more farming and stuff with that. Uh, in combat duration is pretty important. And then also this bonus loot drop chance. And then you can also eventually unlock a bonus loot drop chance by getting stat bonuses on all stats for a certain kind of class. Now, I main summoner... I really like Priest, and I've picked up, like, Sorcerer just so I could eventually get this. But after 1,200 hours of gameplay, this is what I have to show for it. Because you're not going to be getting non-stop, perfect runs, hyper-sweating it out. And you also want to engage in other parts of the game at some point. And even once you've done all that, like, you can still... There's still things to do. You can still do the events. You can still do other kinds of dungeons. You can still go for other kinds of items and gear sets and unlocks and things. So... By making the end game accessible to solo players and like public and making it possible, it doesn't hurt the game at all because again, everything's untradeable soulbound, and it already takes way too long to do any of these dungeons to where only like 0.1% of the player base is going to actively grind for it, and you have to go into third party Discord servers with strict rules to even have a chance of doing it. And this is the end game, so it takes a couple hundred hours to even get to this point. And the dev response lately was to make this ultra end game dungeon harder because they didn't like that people were speed running the mechanics in like the most high-end top tier best player groups so like okay now it's even less accessible for the average player that was already struggling with it uh the reason why i have this the void maxed out is because they did a remnant event where like oh it was easier but they don't do that for anything else they didn't make it to where like yeah orcs does half damage so you can learn celestial phase and actually like finally get a completion under your belt they, they don't do that, which is also really weird. And then Shatters, they had a Shatters rehearsal, but no one did that, so I didn't even learn. I wanted to learn. I went to so many rehearsals to try to beat the boss, and then no one else wanted to. So it really feels like 90 to 95% of the player base can't do half of the in-game dungeons, which has an insane amount of content, because it's not just the, like, stat bonuses and the things behind the stat bonuses. It's also the items inside of it, which is going to help you with, like, clearing other dungeons or increasing your efficiency and stuff. So tons of players can't do it. And I've also kind of experienced that myself where it's like, wow, there's actually just like a lot of kids playing this game or a lot of people that just aren't good at the MMO bullet hole. I guess I have my own skill issue because I can't do some of these like crazy hard things. But like I said, I would consider myself like at least the top 10% of players. Because I look at like other people's gear sets like, wow, they haven't gotten anything to show for it after dozens of hours of playing. Or I'll do some more like mid to late game tier dungeons and realize like, wait, I'm the carry? I, I'm a scrub that can't complete an Oryx 3, and I'm the best one in this third dimension, or I'm, like, the best one in this 6-7 star dungeon that has to, like, solo it for everyone else. Or, like, when I do a dungeon solo, I'm like, wait, why is it easier this time after I had a group of 20 people? Was I actually, like, the best or second best person in a group of just 18 deadweights? That doesn't feel right. So it's like, yeah, a lot of the players are actually just not that great or don't have enough good gear or, like, game sense or builds to actually, like, participate in even the mid-game content. So, like, what, what are you supposed to do when you hit the wall? And the devs don't want you to actually have access unless you go into the discords. And that's the big problem with Realm of the Mad God, that, like, the early game is so freeform. You can do whatever you want. You can craft all the items you never thought you'd have back in, like, 2012 or whenever this game came out when you were playing on Congregate and stuff. It's like you can feel more power than you've ever felt. And you keep growing, you get more power and like all the new content inside the game. And then you just slam into the wall and go, oh, 
now I actually have to like join a discord. I am forced to play a certain way and all my freedom and all my autonomy has been taken away from me because the devs don't want the game accessible. Which is also really weird because back in the day, the hardest content was Tomb of the Ancients and you just ran that all day so you could get mana and max out your character. But that was something that pretty much any in-game or experienced player could complete regularly, especially inside of a group. It was publicly accessible content that was run to no end, and that was before Exaltations. So now the devs have just gone, nah, we're just going to make all that harder, and we're just going to make it impossible for public players. Which is why I don't have faith in the Realm rework, because no one's going to want to like promote this game. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to say, get into Realm of the Mad God now, do the Month of the Mad God events, you know, do this like campaign. You know, get some really cool stuff. That's a free vault expansion. You got some of the new items inside of it, a new character slot. Like, you can get a lot from the event. Sometimes you just log in, get a free bonus. Boom, free character. That's like $5 cash for free just for logging in because every once in a while the devs, like, will give cool freebies in the shop and stuff. And that's also what you play for, those events. That, that kind of snowballing mechanic to get you caught up with a lot of the other players. So if you put 50 hours in and you want a little bit of power spike, yeah, buy the battle pass grab something you think you want on the shop you know that there's nothing wrong with that supporting the devs and whatnot but i can't recommend that i can't say no do this now to get ready for the realm rework so you don't have people like pushing for the game there's no interest now the player base isn't growing in anticipation we kind of saw that with new world new world was like this game that went huge blew up but the devs made terrible decisions and burned out like 90 95 percent of the player base or something and then there was actually another uptick as we went into like a really big summer or fall like a year after the game came out they did like a really big update the sands yeah they, they introduced like a new region and a lot of players are getting back in to catch their character up for the new region in anticipation we aren't seeing that with realm of the mad god looking at the player count for realm of the mad god kind of interesting so we do have the month of mad god bringing in a few more players player base pretty stagnant because it's just people like me that eh we, we don't recommend it, but we still find it fun, and we'll still just kind of grind out and participate in the events as they happen and stuff. Like League of Legends. I've played League of Legends since beginning of Season 2. I can't recommend anyone getting into it, but I still play ranked and put a couple hundred games in per season and stuff. So, like, it, that's just a gaming addiction right there. So, with the big Exalt update, we had, like, almost triple the amount of players and also just a higher average concurrent amount of players that was kind of fluctuating with all the events playing through summer two years ago and then just kind of died off as like people just got more and more burned out by the devs and the inaccessibility of the content and it just doesn't really make any sense as to why you cater to like the one percent of your player base especially because like what are they going to do they already have everything in the game and also who's funding your game at that point like yeah whales are probably carrying this game to an unbelievable degree but if they already have, like, all the in-game stuff, they've already unlocked and have, like, tons of exalts and stuff, and they're just running in Discord groups all day, how much are they really spending at that point if they've already kind of beaten it? Feels like there's a lot more money to get from new players, again, that come in like, oh, I need a bundle, or I want a starter pack or something, and I, that's going to be, like, worth it because I've already put a couple hours in this game, or I plan on playing for, like, 40 hours. So, you know, you spend 20 bucks on a 40 hour game there you, you're doing better than a 60 dollar triple a title so that's why i don't understand it at all since everything's soul bound there's not going to be an economy disruption and adding in more players really just seems like it's going to make more money for the devs and the mids and you're only going to be offending like two percent of the player base max because the mid to end game players like me want to get access to this content i want publicly available exaltations to be available for pretty much everything but no, they make like an advanced Cogbold Steamworks and they make it harder to beat some of these dungeons and they're already impossible to begin with and they're not giving us any events like Remnant of the Void. I've spent almost $200 on this game since I got back into it because yeah, I saw some of the boosts, I saw the battle passes. Uh, if you click, you know, buy gold, you have this value. I said, you know what? If I'm going to spend like $100 from like 20 here, 20 there, I might as well just grab this now and get the 60% bonus. So I've actually spent a lot on this game, except I haven't made any purchases in like the last six months. This year, haven't really spent anything on the game, so I don't feel respected. I actually, like when I'm getting more accessibility, even a couple more handouts, and my game satisfaction is up, I'm going to spend more money on the game. Giving me free stuff in game isn't going to lock me out of making it making purchases it's gonna make me want to spend more and get extra progression because i feel like my time is being fairly compensated and rewarded that's like another weird thing that doesn't make sense devs get in their own head they make really bad decisions game kind of goes into a death spiral and then 
they feel held hostage by like such a small part of the player base that doesn't that's only doing harm to the game instead of making it more accessible to more people so you have like one two percent of gatekeepers that are in discord exclusive runs and that's the only way you can complete the content instead of trying to get thousands more players active into the game to just build a community and make it to where this is something like yo you play realm mad god cool and then more people find it and get interested and start playing themselves there's a positive loop there that's being actively avoided by the devs it feels i mean we've seen a lot of success with runescape even runescape 3 just kind of embracing that saying well we're going to piss off our max players but if we let like a majority of the community have more access to maxing by having higher experience rates or more events and even like soft pay to win shenanigans you know easy scape and the treasure hunter or whatever you're just going to have more players contributing more money and playing for longer so you have a more active community of more satisfied players by not feeling held hostage by like the super top hyper in game yeah they have put maybe the most money and the most dedication and time into the game but you can't have them gatekeep out 99% of the rest of the player base or also potential player base. Uh, so that's my biggest problem. Like, come on, man, just just make that accessible. And I know the realm rework is making it to where like the realm events will contribute to exaltations. And there's a chance that's like, oh, that's the that's the alt gameplay loop. If you want the solo public gameplay loop, you just do realm events and then you like get exaltations slower. But that still locks an insane amount of content behind the in-game dungeons. And since they've talked about not wanting power creep, your time is still not respected and you're not going to gain enough power to even start doing this content publicly or solo. And I don't mean like, oh, I need to get powerful enough to do a solo Shatters run. I just mean like, if I'm just playing and there's other people around and we can, you know, band together and do one of these, that should be possible for people like me inside the game. But it really just isn't. And doesn't look like they're increasing the power enough to ever make that possible. And that's why I'm kind of upset. Also, a lot of things in the game are just too rare, like the sets. I've been grinding for the Earthen Summoner set, because I am a Summoner main, and it seems like a really cool set, for the last year and a half, 1,200 hours of gameplay. Now, not all of that is, like, directly going for it, but I haven't completed the set despite doing hundreds of dungeon runs. This was actually from a set chest. So there was like an event that gives you like a random set chest that drops like a random piece. So I got like the 1% chance of getting this drop. But I've defeated the boss that drops this over 100 times. Haven't gotten it. Even had loot boosters. Haven't had it. There's another piece. I don't, I've never even seen the weapon. Again, despite over 100 clears. So like set pieces should not be 1% drops in a dungeon that's rare to get. That isn't like super common. That also takes several minutes to complete. It's just again like hundreds of hours of gameplay to get one thing. Well now I'm not going to use it. You know, I have this were werewolf character, but he only comes around for Halloween. So if I die with this, well, there goes several dozens hours of work farming the event to then just lose it because it's a permadeath game. And if I want to get it back, I can't even grind it back because it's Halloween only. So I have to wait till like the next Halloween to get the set. And then like maybe I still don't even feel like running it or trying it because something stupid could happen. That happened to me earlier. One of these sets just came out where, like, you grind dungeons and then you get gems and you use that to craft it. And I lost it to something stupid because I don't have enough experience with it because the set pieces are so hard to get. And then if I, like, try to do higher level content with what's a new set, like, I'm expecting power creep, but this is actually just, like, not that crazy of a set. It seems more, like, group DPS oriented and not solo oriented, but it's like, wait, I can solo the dungeon that I died in on, like, a standard uh character that i used that i like forged gear for and i can just pull some random things out of here and actually beat this dungeon but the new exclusive set is so reverse power prepped is so underpowered but after grinding for days with like all these special keys and all these like limited events to get this set i almost immediately died with it so like and now it's just gone so like okay cool now i don't want to do that anymore i have like all these other things i've grinded but it takes so much work to get a set that doesn't even give you like in-game level power it doesn't make any sense. I have this archer set that I don't want to use because it took me hours to get because it's a 1% drop in the treasure room. So not guaranteed in an uncommon dungeon that takes a bit of time to find and complete. Like just make the sets more accessible or at least make them worth the power to where like if it takes me so long to get it, I should be like God tier, but I'm still at risk of losing it. So the devs don't want to make the sets accessible, and if you just kind of like go out into the game, no one's using the sets because they've either never gotten the complete set drop, 
or they don't want to risk losing it because it's so rare and so valuable. Even though I have all of the stuff, it's not helping me break into the end game. I'm at risk of losing it, and a lot of his on classes I don't play or don't really like playing. And I'm kind of like comfortable with some of the other like kits and gear sets I've built out on some of my other characters as well. So like, even having too many items isn't a bad thing, and again, it's all untradeable, so it's not doing anything to the economy. I'm still gonna play and grind. I just like numbers going up. I just like having stuff. Just let me ha just let me accumulate, even if I'm never gonna use it. Like the stack of three diamonds in my Minecraft chest. So yeah, just like weird decisions from the devs to remove autonomy, not respect your time, and then just make things like unnecessarily stingy. And that's not good for the game. That's not going to expand the lifespan of the game. Makes me not want to recommend the game, not play as much, and not spend any money. That goes into another reason why I'm not hopeful for the Realm rework, because the devs don't seem to like want to get any attention on this game. And I guess I already kind of talked about where like, yeah, New World had hype building up into it because people want to get back in. Well, Mad God doesn't really have that, even with like this big thing coming up. That's because the devs don't want to support outsider creators. I hit up the community manager. I said, hey, what are you offering for like content creators for some kind of creator program or a couple of one-off videos? I'll even just take in-game currency. I don't know what their compensation is, but like I can make guides for this. I could do streams. I could get people interested. It's not like I'm I'm an FPS player trying to get people to play what's perceived as like an old congregate kids game or something. No, Nintendo Pokemon overlap isn't too crazy, and there's a couple people in my audience that already play, so this would increase the amount of players in the game, but I was told that no, they want to find people already making Realm content. That doesn't make any sense, because they already have the Realm audience, so that is that is the opposite of how you grow. So if you want to have a thriving game that's making a lot of revenue and you're doing big updates to kind of increase the accessibility to new players or early to mid game players so they can like stick around the game longer and really experience it, that's the worst way of trying to get your game to grow is by making it content creator exclusive to the people that already have an audience of this like small dedicated player base. My content style is guides. It's introducing people into a new game, into a franchise, into whatever's going on, and making it as accessible as possible while also finding like little min-maxes and tips and tricks. I love doing that. I love making that kind of content. I'm experienced with it. And to try to grow this game, even like, I asked this months ago. So as we were going into like just standard events, like, hey, grow, grow the player base during downtime. Or as we're like trying to build up for Month of Mad God for the Realm rework, so that's why I have no faith in this update doing anything for the player base, and there's not even, like, interest from outside of already dedicated realm players for it, which kind of defeats the purpose. And man, I haven't even gotten into my rant about the enchantment system not respecting my time and not letting me into the end game because they're so worried about power creep, even though they've kept the power stagnant for the last two years, which is really stupid. So, like, all this going on. So, like, this month of Mad God, they botched it last month of mad god also like the vindication event was just a complete abomination no one liked it a lot of players quit off of that it was just horribly executed like the one of the worst events or some people are even saying like the worst event in realm of mad god history and that was just last year and there's no rebounding from it so i have no faith in the devs especially because they're just making harder and harder content without any power creep to catch up to it and they're making it less and less accessible for the average player or public player. And then there's the enchantment system, which is just way too expensive. So I've talked about like exalts taking forever and that's how it's supposed to work. Like when you introduce a new feature, you like make the power creep so strong or you like nerf the older features. So that way people do the once exclusive in-game content that now becomes like the new mid to in-game. And then the next piece of in-game content kind of becomes the thing everyone strives for. Instead, they just layered this on top of the already exclusive impossible, like, exaltations, and then they just made it even worse. So, like, the enchantment system, you have to get these exclusive engravings, which don't even make your power and gear that much stronger because they're stingy on the power creep. This is, like, your enchantment currency, but it's way too expensive. Let me go and just kind of find something here. So let's say I have this robe. This robe is already annoying enough to get. It's a rare drop in a mid to late game dungeon that takes a couple minutes to complete. I can also craft it, but I need to find the blueprint, which takes my fame currency to get, or it's an even rarer drop to where I can get to the point of crafting it. And then I also have to spend a lot of resources to craft it to now finally get the unlock slot, which is an outrageous amount of currency away to get a small power level increase that doesn't even get me to the in-game 
tier of items. So it takes 1250 of this currency. You get 10 for completing one of these in-game dungeons I've talked about like is so hard to complete and takes such a long time to complete. Now there is more to it. Okay, so we have like 9 to 13, 8 to 12. Some of like the super duper in-game ones just drop a small amount, but there's also a chance. So like on average, you're actually getting smaller amounts. So, like a nest takes three to five minutes to complete. So that means you're getting like a dust a minute on average. So that means that that can't be, it takes 1200 minutes of work to get an upgrade to not even get something that puts you above the existing tier of items because they don't want power creep. But fine, let's say I grind the 15 to 20 hours to get one of my four pieces of gear slightly more powerful. That's not it because this is just unlocking the slot and it takes more dust to then actually increase the power of whatever gear I'm trying to upgrade. And after doing all of that, it doesn't make me strong enough to complete this without a Discord group. The power increase doesn't justify it. Also, if I'm wearing this set and my character dies, it's just gone forever. That could happen because of lag. You know, I haven't made like a big deal about that, but yeah, like you just lag out, the game glitches sometimes. Devs never give you your character or your items back because that's how they treat the permadeath and people would exploit that system where it's like, hey, I died unfairly, sure bro, here's everything back. So you just lose your stuff, that's a possibility. Also, like sometimes you get unlucky, even like high level players die from time to time, a lot of compilations of that. Or you still like struggle to beat content and you still have to leave 10 minutes into a dungeon half the time because you die otherwise if you don't panic teleport. Yeah, there's better rates on some of the higher level stuff. So it's like, okay, uh, I work sanctuary. Like it's so hard to also math and time some of these ones out because you have to close the realm, do Oryx 1, do Oryx 2, do the mini boss, and then finally beat Oryx. That's, that's 20 minutes right there. So yeah, 50% chance for like 30 essence. Yeah, it's, it's one a minute pretty much no matter what, unless you're doing Moonlight Village. No, Moonlight Village is like 10 minutes and that's a 50% chance. So yeah, 1200 minutes of grinding a dungeon for the essence to then not get more powerful than the drops in the thing you're grinding. So yeah, the end game wall is insane unless you're in like the 1% of Discord sweats holding the game hostage. And even like all the incredible amounts of grinding, the hundreds and hundreds of hours of grinding that were introduced with this new update actually don't make you any more powerful for all the increasingly difficult stuff coming into the game. Maybe maybe it's meant for like the realm rework, which is delayed, which is another like dev issue. It's like, yeah, maybe this, maybe this stuff isn't meant for the dungeons and it's meant to like grind out the new realm faster and then get dust and upgrades that way. But even then it's like, it, it's not an equivalent amount of power to the amount of work it takes. The, the game's power curve and like the satisfaction curve just does not exist. Let my thousand hours in the game actually mean something. And after 3000 hours, if there's nothing more for me to do, that's perfectly acceptable developers. And eventually like I can come back months later and like do the next event or the new content update or something, blow through that. That's how an MMO is. Maybe they just like reject what an MMO is but that's at like the complete cost of the game. And now the game's dying because just too much stinginess and too many weird decisions and not wanting players to have like untradeable loot too easily and then having to waste all their time in something that they can die with and then just lose all of that work for. I haven't gotten to the point where it's like I die and then perma quit the game, but man, I'm just more like, well, I can't touch any of the things so I don't want to risk losing them. I can't get half the things I want because it's either like too rare or it's just too difficult. And then I don't see any of the new content, new updates making any of that more accessible and more fun. I want to grind it out, make it to where, you know, I can actually like take this gear set, upgrade it after like a day or two of playing and then have like a better chance at some of this like content that's otherwise difficult. This was the perfect way of giving accessibility into the, the content by allowing for some fair power creep when said no, like there's just no content. Month of the Mad God, big anniversary celebration, new enchanting system, new gear, means absolutely nothing because it's power neutral. So yeah, that's why I don't have faith in the realm rework and I don't have faith in this game growing and I'm just kind of like whatever about playing and I just kind of only play it to watch numbers go up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.